Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to draw a lady slipper. And um, lady slippers are native to Maine. They're probably native to a lot of places, but um, but I remember growing up in the woods behind my house, there were lady slippers growing, and I can remember from a young as a young child being told never to pick them because they're um, an endangered species. So I'm starting with this um, these kind of like almond shapes, two side by side for the. Um, for kind of like the uh, just the big petals there, and then I've got kind of this uh, triangle shape. I'm trying not to draw too dark because I want to make sure I'll be able to blend over everything. Now here on this side, I've kind of got this. Uh, I don't know. It's almost like a, it almost looks like a dog's head with a dog ear on it. Remember, you always look for those simple shapes, and we'll have a little one flipping up over there, and then another one up here, kind of high, and then. Um, it's got kind of like a little hood on it. We have uh, Jack in the Pulpits growing behind our house now, and they don't bloom every year, but they, they're interesting. They remind me of this plant quite a bit, I think, because I've always been told those were endangered as well. Um, and I'm going to put a couple really big leaves down here, and just kind of like wrapping around the stem. And you'll be able to see my drawing a lot better as I color it in. So I've got a couple of those big leaves there. And um, I think what I'm going to do is actually cut the top of my paper off there so I can kind of zoom in a little bit closer and I won't, I can frame it up a little bit better. So let me zoom in. The colors that I'm using, I've got a couple shades of green, a couple shades of um, pink, uh, a couple of yellows, a brown, and a white. Use what you have to get the similar colors. All right, so to begin, um, I think I'll start with the, uh, the large petals and I'm going to use, um, this is raspberry by Prismacolor. It's kind of a deep, um, cool red. And I am working on Can'ts and Me Tints paper in uh, the color, it's either, I think it's moss. It's not, ivy is much darker, but it's basically like a kind of a mossy, um, a mossy green. I was reorganizing my art studio yesterday and I was going through my big rack where I keep all the, um, all of my pads of paper and I had a loose sheet of this and I was like, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna put some of this color into these, um, little leaves that these little, well, I guess they're petals kind of coming off the flower here. Um, I like the Cans and Me Tints paper because one side is fairly smooth. This is a fairly smooth side and the other side has a little bit more of a texture to it. I don't know if you can see that on the on the camera or not, but it does, trust me. Um, you can get that actually in small pads. I usually get the full sheets, but now they make it available in much more, um, uh, much better sizes, I guess, for the average, uh, the average crafter and artist. All right, I'm gonna throw a little bit of that in there. Now I'm going to go in with this um, pink. This is a magenta pink. It's a little bit lighter than the raspberry. It's also a little bit more vivid. And I'm going to kind of color over, a little bit over what I already did and kind of just bring it out at this point, I'm not really trying to um, saturate the paper. I'm just trying to lay down color. And then I'm going to go in with, um, actually, I think I'll even go a little bit lighter right out to the edge because I need a little, uh, little color there to mix my white into. So now I'm going to grab the white and I'm going to be using it as a lightening agent and also to blend my colors together. And now this is important to, to make the strokes of your pencil um, kind of follow the curve of your flower because then that's how you'll get your uh, the look of the veining. Spent the whole day practically cleaning the uh, cleaning my studio except for the um, hour I spent scrubbing my kitchen floor, which was so gross. I came down here in the morning down to my studio and I just I had just watched a video. I just watched this this uh, craft room tour. Um, and it was Wil Vilna, um, oh shoot, what's her last name? Furstenberg Scrap Room. She's a, a girl over at Two Peas. And she's just the most beautiful scrapbook room. And it's so clean and light and airy. And I walked down and I watched that. And I walked down to my room and it's just looking so pitiful. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, this is horrible. I gotta do something about it. So, um, but I, but I couldn't quite uh, digest what I needed to do. So I, you know, took a look around. Then I went upstairs and I washed my kitchen floor, which desperately needed a good thorough scrubbing and um, then I came back down here I took a few breaks during the day and I have to say I'm very happy with it it's certainly not as a uh, spacious and uh, light and bright as uh, Vilna's but it is uh, I'm happy with it it is uh, much much better 
All right, I'm gonna use this um, yellowy color, which is called um, yellow ochre. Oh, it's one of my favorite colors, and other mediums too. And I'm coloring over what I colored with the um, with the raspberry on these side petals. These are these are gonna end up being a much more dull color, a dull kind of um, you know, almost like how that um, you know, on like an iris, it's got that onion skinny type. Um, I don't know what you call it. It's not really a petal, but it's kind of like this uh, wrapping almost that comes around the hip of the iris. It's kind of what we have here. It's kind of that same texture and color. So I uh, I want to get that in there represented. And I'm also going to very lightly color over this little section here, which I'll be adding more color to. So you want to press lightly when you think you want to go in with more color later, and you can press more firmly. Um, you know, after, you know, when you're when you're sure you're ready to blend it together. Once you burnish that down, it's very hard to add more color. I'm adding a little bit more of this uh this magenta in there. And then I'm gonna start working on my greens. I like to skip around when I'm working so that um so I don't get anything too done at once because sometimes you change your mind or you realize something doesn't quite look right. And it's easier to see that when you've been kind of hopping around. And let's see, we got this little petal up here, this kind of like little, this little hood. It's so fun to walk around the, uh, at least in my area, we have lots of, um, we have lots of natural wild areas and Audubon societies and, um, you know, bogs that you can go and walk and you see pitcher plants and you see all these wonderful, um, wonderful plants. And it's just amazing that they grew without any help. And sometimes despite the hindrances of um, of us, they they somehow found a way, find a way to thrive and grow. And, and I was always taught to respect that from my mother who has a beautiful green thumb, but she always was, she always made sure if we were gonna go play in the woods, do not pick the lady slippers. <laughs> she always, I think there's still a bunch growing out there. All right, and now for these um, these leaves down here, I'm actually going to start. I think I'm going to take some of the yellow ochre just so I can keep a nice, um, a nice really bright edge. I'm going to go around the edge with the yellow ochre and just gently fill in a little bit with color. I don't work with uh, really sharp pencils, um, and it's not that I don't like to use sharp pencils. It's more that I'm stingy with my pencil lead, so. Um, so I do a lot of kind of like basing in colors and then I, I only kind of sharpen at the end if I need to, if I need to get like a, like a specific, I need to like put in a specific mark and I'm worried that I can't achieve it. And I got this nice, lovely, uh, bright green. This is uh, chartreuse, but you know, if you're using a different brand of pencils, they'll have different names, just kind of, um, just kind of approximately try to get the same colors that I'm doing or, you know, or colors of your choosing. The lady slippers around here tend to be pink, but I know they come in white and they probably come a little more purpley too. I'm not, um, I am not a botanist, so I can't tell you for sure. Now I also sometimes like to use a side of my pencil and just kind of fill in that way a little bit too, because I do like the look of my colors when they blend together. All right, now I'm gonna go in with this darker. This is um, olive green. And I'm going to add, you know what, I feel like I need to lighten up that stem here too. Let me do that before I go, before I get too crazy. I'm gonna go in with some yellow ochre. And I'm gonna go in with some of this chartreuse. I felt like that, that's too dark. And see, since I got in and started working on the leaves, I could tell it's like, yeah, that is, that is too dark. I might even have to add some white into it. Just lighten that up a little bit so then I can my shadows will stand up a little bit better next to it all right so I'm putting a little bit of the olive green in the center of this um, leaf just to kind of I feel like I'm mumbling I hope I'm not mumbling <laughs> I hope you can hear me you can understand me um, I'm just putting some of this olive green into the shadows and let's see, I'm gonna, I kind of change directions on that leaf, so I want to make sure that that one is overlapping. And then as you start to add dark colors especially, or you start to get to the point where you're going to blend colors, you want to make sure your strokes of pencil go in the direction 
of what you're coloring if you want to show you know that sort of direction so I wouldn't go color it like that because if I do that I would get all these lines that were in uh, opposition to what I wanted to um, to convey what I wanted to convey with the um, with the you know subject matter so you want to go with the flow you know what I mean all right now I'm going to start blending this a little bit with my um, with my chartreuse they do sell um, clear blenders, and I use them sometimes. They're kind of like a stick of uh, wax, maybe a little bit of pumice in them that, that can kind of help you blend without adding or altering the color. Um, and that is, that's fine to use as well. I tend to like this method because I don't have to, because with the other method, you kind of um, you kind of fill up the tooth of your paper, and then you go in and you blend, and this way I can kind of kill two birds with one stone, so it's a little bit quicker, but, um, you know, you should try different techniques and see what you prefer because I mean you may prefer to kind of putter around and color something for an hour and that's fun and I do that sometimes but for the my videos I gotta you know nobody wants to watch me color for an hour and uh, my camera will only let me shoot for 20 minutes at a time and I um, and I don't have time to edit uh, more than one video a week so um, I kind of, you know, I have a lot of people that, that want lots of tutorials, daily tutorials, and I love to do them, but they're going to go in there raw because I just don't have time to edit that many. Um, so I get asked that sometimes. I thought I would just, uh, I mean, it's not completely that I'm lazy. It's just that I don't have time to do, um, uh, more editing than I already do. If you like edited videos, you can watch my Paper Mart videos. Those are always edited ones that produce for Paper Mart, a wonderful company. They don't sell colored pencils though, unfortunately. Oriental Trading does. They actually have the Prismacolor set of 48 and um, they have price match guarantee, so they'll beat anybody's price by 10% if you find it cheaper, so that's always nice. I didn't get these from them. I've had these for a long time, but, uh, but it's always nice when, you know, you can find some place where you can get a really good deal. In there. And, you know, so I just kind of keep building up colors. We can kind of see just with a few extra steps I've done to that leaf versus that leaf, how much more it looks. Um, it looks done. You know, it really starts to look completed. Um, I want to put some more of this olive here on the back because um, look at how look at how the edge of this flower is nice and glowing and bright. So our light source is coming in kind of when you're nature, you might have like diffused light from all sorts of um, directions, but we definitely see more light coming in from this direction. So I really want to add some more dark on this side of this leaf. Now, yeah, we see shadow inside there, but that's also being shadowed by this leaf. So, you know, when in doubt, just kind of think, well, where's my light coming from? And what makes sense? Your brain will usually tell you, you know, what to do, how it should look. Um, you know, just don't, don't overthink it, but just be aware of it so that when you do, um, when you do color, you're, you don't have all sorts of weird highlights and shadows that don't seem to make sense. Before I get it too saturated, I'm just going to go in a little bit of white because I can blend out of there. Some people like to use white as a blender, um, too, and that's, I do if it's something I'm doing that's really light that I need to add that extra lightness to, but generally I don't. I generally use whatever is the lightest color I'm working with, or I'll use a blender. Because it does, it can kind of haze it up for some reason. I think white might have a little bit more of the wax in there, I'm not sure. It does seem to be a little hazier of a color. And then I kind of go in and I like to, I like to add little highlights with my white. Just having a little highlight does seem to make it look a little bit more sparkly and pretty. All right, add a little bit on the stem if I can. All right, and I feel like I need a little bit more light up here. So I'm gonna go in with my chartreuse, see if I can, yep, I can pull a little bit, a little bit more light in there. And I seem to have quite a bit of uh, going over the lines there a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just kind of make the stem a little bit thicker. There. I also want to kind of get rid of that white outline that I had from where I sketched it on. All right, so now we just need to blend these out a little bit. And I did grab a brown, and um, so if I just added the brown to this area here, everything else would look kind of like out of place. So what I need to do is actually add this a few different places. So I'll add some here in the shadow. I'll add some in here in the shadow. So this brand new color is also going to help me um, bring back any edges that I've lost, which is also a neat little trick. This is um, just dark brown. That's the name of it. 
um, if you're following along and you're using Prismacolor pencils. But again, use what you have. Always use what you have before you go and buy new because what you have may be just fine and dandy. Um, I have went out and bought new supplies because I was excited. I saw them, like somebody used them, or I was just excited that a company was coming out with, you know, a certain supply. And then I come to find out that it's no better than what I already had. So, you know, that, that happens. So it's always better to try what you have and see if it's going to work for you. Um, I'm curious, somebody, the person who requested the lady slipper said she just got these Spectrum Noir pencils. Um, and I saw them demoed on Create and Craft one day and they did look really nice and uh, I don't I need more pencils like a hole in the head so I won't be getting them um, I don't think but I'm really curious to see how they are so if you have those pencils if you wouldn't mind dropping me a line uh, just leave a comment actually leave, leave a comment and then other people can benefit too um, just uh, let us know what you think of them because I'm very very curious I kind of wish I had had pulled a light pink here because I'm feeling like I would really like a light pink but I'm not gonna add a light pink in the stage of the game because I've already finished coloring this and I think that would be a little weird to add that in. So what I'll be doing is using a little white on top of this ras this magenta, this magenta to kind of give me that color. So I did go in and add a little extra brown because I could add it many places, but I'm not going to go and add the pink because I'm concerned that that's just going to give me a little bit too much weirdness. A little bit it's going to look out of place. At this point I think I am going to sharpen this pencil. We've got three and a half minutes left. We're doing good. I, I'm always I'm always really careful about the uh, the white pencils because they tend to break more than any other color. I don't know why. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, put in this lightning color here. It's it's kind of a, and I, feel free to turn your um, your picture around as you go. I find that I'm like for doing curves, I can, you know. Oops, and look, see, there we go. I'm going to pause this while I sharpen this. All right, I actually huh, had another one. Lucky me. Somebody had asked me about what the squidgy eraser in their uh, drawing kit is. It's a kneaded eraser, and to clean it, you just simply pull it apart. But the cool thing about this is that you can point it into little areas, and if you get you know, some pigment where you don't want it, you kind of press and pull, and you can lift some of that up. My uh, When my pencil broke, it kind of went, went all rogue on me. So, um, so I wanted to get that up before it got stuck there. Um, just a reminder, if you're watching this and you're having a hard time seeing the detail, please just um, hit the little button on the bottom of your YouTube player and that will make it big, the little full screen button, and um, it should be easier for you to see. Can we finish this in two minutes? I really, I really think we can. I'm up to the challenge. We're almost done, really. Just throw in a little bit of highlight here. You know, have fun with it. Take your pencils outside when the weather gets good and, and draw from life. That's my favorite. That's where you learn the most because you'll you'll remember um, how things really look when you come back to your studio more than if you draw from a photograph. It's really, it's really a great thing. We have a, I have a woman that lives in town. She has beautiful gardens and one day I stopped by and she, her gardener was there and I asked if I could bring my painting class to her uh, to her garden and he gave me her phone number and I called her up and she let me and I actually never ever met the woman in person but um, but she let my painting class come and paint in her gardens. I thought that was awfully nice. Um, so, you know, if you see somebody with a great garden, you know, don't be shy. They might let you paint in there too. All right, so this pretty much wraps it up. Just keep uh, going back in and blending and layering until you are happy with the way it looks. Don't forget to sign your name because you should be proud of the work that you create. And um, if you do this project and you want to share it, then please go on over to the Facebook page. There's a link below the video. Um, leave, a, leave a little message on my wall. Put the picture up for all of us to see. Um, it's so nice to see when people uh, make something beautiful from one of our tutorials. There you go. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up if you wouldn't mind and subscribe so you don't miss another video. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.